Please stand for our opening hymn, Come Holy Ghost. and of the Holy Spirit. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. We gather here today for our Mass of the Holy Spirit. Different circumstances, different times. But we come as we've always come and as generations of Jesuit faculty, staff, and students have come over the years to Mass of the Holy Spirit, to pray, and to seek strength. And so in that spirit, let us pause and recall those intentions, those people we most want to pray for today. Lord Jesus, you come to call the contrite. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, we turn to you for healing and strength. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, we turn to you at the right hand of the Father, asking for forgiveness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. 
And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. And let us pray. O God, who have taught the hearts of the faithful by the light of the Holy Spirit, grant that in the same Spirit we may be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolation. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Habakkuk. Then the Lord answered me and said, Write down the vision. Make it plain upon tablets, so that the one who reads it may run. For the vision is a witness for the appointed time, a testimony to the end. It will not disappoint. If it delays, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not be late. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God who produces all of them in everyone. 
To each individual, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. To one is given through the Spirit the expression of wisdom. To another, the expression of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another, mighty deeds. To another, prophecy. To another, discernment of spirits. To another, varieties of tongues. To another, interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit produces all of these, distributing them individually to each person as the Spirit wishes. The word of the Lord. with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to john this is my commandment love one another as i love you no one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends you are my friends if you do as I command you. I no longer call you slaves, because a slave does not know what his master is doing. I have called you friends, because I have told you everything I have heard from my Father. It was not you who chose me, but I who chose you, and appointed you to go and bear fruit that will last, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. This I command you, love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. The Mass of the Holy Spirit is a long-standing tradition in Jesuit schools to mark the opening of the academic year and to call upon the Holy Spirit to bless and inspire, strengthen the campus community. Today, we are obviously here in unusual circumstances. In the Church of St. Ignatius, physically distanced from one another or attending virtually. And now our country is dealing with a pandemic, economic upheaval, tensions regarding race and police, and divisive politics. 
Many are understandably anxious and fearful. We are truly living in an extraordinary moment. And I believe that this Mass, especially the Scripture passages and focus on the Holy Spirit, offers much needed perspective and encouragement for us as we live out our lives in this particular set of circumstances. The first reading was from the book of the prophet Habakkuk, and it reflects a tumultuous time for the people of Israel. The writer was struggling to make sense of negative events happening around him, especially God allowing them to happen. And in his answer to Habakkuk's complaint, God stresses the importance of the larger picture, vision, and perseverance. He told Habakkuk, write down the vision clearly upon the tablets so that one can read it readily. For the vision still has its time, presses on to fulfillment, and will not disappoint. If it delays, wait for it. It will not be late. Vision is a word that suggests to me a way of seeing and conceiving that is transformative, that offers realizable ideals so compelling that individuals are energized and willing to invest themselves in an enterprise far more effectively and extensively than they would have thought possible. A vision captures in clear, compelling fashion the aspirations, ambitions, dreams, and goals that inspire and sustain. And it also shapes the long-term direction of people and organizations. This Mass urges us to consider the vision that impels us forward, that guides and motivates us. And if our vision is faltering or unclear, today's reading from Habakkuk reminds that the vision still has its time, that we should wait for it, and that it will surely come. When our vision is not strong or needs strengthening, I suggest entering into a dialogue with the traditions and values that shaped our lives so that we might be re-energized by past aspirations, hopes, and memories. And in addition, I think it is critical that we periodically engage in reflection about experiences, whether positive or negative, consider in prayer beliefs and also relationships that have and continue to affect who we are, that influence our attitudes and aspirations. Having a vision, especially in these days, is essential. And I'm also reminded of a passage in Proverbs 29, 18, which proclaims that where there is no vision, the people perish. Vision shapes and drives mission. Mission leads to purpose and priorities that give focus to our lives and cause us to invest and sacrifice for longer-term goals. Individuals and organizations need a clear sense of mission to thrive. 
The life of St. Ignatius shows the impact and intersection of vision and mission. He came to a new understanding of himself, a new vision, after his religious conversion and deepening relationship with Christ. And that vision led him to commit himself to work for the greater glory of God, to strive to help make God more present in his day. He and his early companions eventually decided that the Society of Jesus, which they formed together, should choose the mission of education, particularly conducting schools that stressed integration of humanistic education and character formation. That mission continues here at Boston College because of our work, our efforts. We strive to emphasize the liberal arts. We work in graduate and professional programs. We are very aware of the importance of student formation. We know it's critical that we have an atmosphere of caring and belief pervading our campus. And we want all that because it reflects a vision, a mission, our values, our beliefs, and our heritage. In today's Gospel, Christ articulates a clear mission for all of his followers and all people of goodwill. He proclaimed, love one another as I have loved you. The desire to do that has motivated millions of people over the past 2,000 years. As part of that mission, Christ called people and calls us to go forth and bear fruit, fruit that will last. The Gothic buildings on Middle Campus were built to last and to lift people's hearts and minds to heaven and the eternal, all that lasts. I sometimes think about the individuals who quarried, sawed, and fitted blocks of granite, each block of different size, shape, color, texture, to form the exterior walls of Gasson, St. Mary's, and Babst nearly a hundred years ago. Their skills and dedication have provided generations of BC faculty, staff, and alumni with wonderful spaces for teaching and learning, scholarship, and prayer. The hands and labors of those workers continue to bear fruit in our day. Those words go forth and bear fruit, bear fruit that will last, apply to us and should be part of our mission. We can live that mission in our everyday lives through simple acts such as saying hello to people we meet on the sidewalk or in corridors and visibly recognizing human beings and possibly lifting their spirits, or through more difficult but so much needed commitment to help everyone in our midst feel welcome, valued, and respected, and also to explicitly object to words or actions that harm the community around us and leave wounds. Besides vision and mission, 
Today's Mass invites us to reflect on the role of the Holy Spirit in our lives. In the second reading, Paul wrote to the Corinthians that to each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good, with some receiving the gift of wisdom, others knowledge, faith, and healing. According to the teachings of the Catholic Church, there are seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. Wisdom, understanding, knowledge, counsel, fortitude, piety, and fear of the Lord, meaning reverence and amazement before God. Praying for those gifts and for the guidance and strength of the Holy Spirit are wonderful ways for us to start this academic year and to prepare for the challenges and opportunities that lie ahead. My special prayer for us in the Boston College community is that we be people with a clear vision, compelling sense of mission, and abiding trust in the Holy Spirit. Doing so will certainly bear fruit that will last and also promote the greater glory of God. And let us stand now and, and bring before God some of the prayers that are in our hearts. Lord, send your spirit to strengthen the church, the members of the Society of Jesus, and those who serve as colleagues in mission with them. We pray. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord, send, us your send your spirit upon us as a community that we may challenge norms and break the hopeless cycle of racism, poverty, ignorance, and prejudice. We pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord, send your spirit to those who suffer violence in our cities and neighborhoods that guide us to value the dignity of each person. We pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord, send your spirit to guide the human race that we may strive to preserve and heal our fragile planet so that future generations may know the beauty and goodness of your creation. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, send your spirit to all who mourn as we remember our family, friends, classmates, and colleagues in our Boston College community who died this past year, especially those from the coronavirus. We pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord, send your spirit upon all faculty, staff, students, friends, and benefactors of this university. Help us to discern our deepest longings and the deepest desires of our hearts, which we now offer in silence. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, our God, we know that the Spirit dwells among us, calling us to live together as one in your love. Open our hearts to receive the graces of the Spirit, that we might shine the light and hope of faith for all to see. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Humble spirit and kind heart may be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, from my sin, and from my enemy. And let's pray that my sacrifice and yours might be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, Father of mercies, who because of the great love with which you loved us, with untold goodness and gave us your only begotten Son, Grant, we pray, that being perfectly united with him, we may offer you worthy homage through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For raised up high on the cross, he gave himself up for us with a wonderful love and poured out blood and water from his pierced side, the wellspring of the church's sacraments, so that, won over to the open heart of the Savior, all might draw waters joyfully from the springs of salvation. And so, with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Ignatius, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us, Lamb of God, you take the of your body, but grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. For communion this afternoon, we ask you to wait for your campus minister to come and release you from your row. Father Monick will have gluten-free hosts right in front of the ambo here. Downstairs, Father Casey will have gluten-free hosts. Following archdiocesan recommendations, we will not be sharing the precious blood or receiving on the tongue. We ask you to come forward with your arms extended, mask on, and the priest will drop the host into your hands. Move to the, to the arrows on the side, six feet, remove your mask and consume the host. Replace your mask and return to your seats. During the recessional hymn, please wait for the campus minors to help guide you out of the church.
Let us pray. Lord, our God, who have been pleased to nourish us with heavenly food, pour, we pray, the gifts of the Holy Spirit into our hearts, that what we have devoutly received in time we may possess as a gift for eternity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And before we leave today, certainly I want to express my gratitude to all who helped make our Mass in these unusual times possible, prayerful, to the staff of Campus Ministry, to individuals at the Church of St. Ignatius, and to all of those who are able to be here in St. Ignatius and participating around the world via live streaming. It's a tribute, I think, to our faith and commitment that we are here and that we're striving to make our way through a pandemic and circumstances that have all kinds of challenges. But we do that together, wearing our masks and washing our hands. That's what we have to do, and we will. So I am grateful to all of you for helping make this Mass of the Holy Spirit memorable and prayerful. And perhaps you can join me in a round of applause for all those individuals who have helped us be here today. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God. And thank you.